thank you all. This is um, truly awesome. I mean, this is amazing that you're all here and, and hey, Norman, and to be here with these uh, incredible activists on the panel and uh, APAs for Progress, wow, what an incredible um, national hangout and event and all these coordinated events today. It, it's really amazing. And I have to say, um, I'm only going to speak a couple of minutes, but I, I, I just want to say um, 30 years ago, um, we would never have dreamed of this. I mean, and when you think about 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from today, you'll also be thinking, wow, um, look how far we've come. And so that's something. Um, this time of year is always a little bittersweet for me. I mean, I, I know that uh, had Vincent Chin not been murdered, uh, he would be 57 today. And, um, you know, today is the day that actually his life support was removed. And so there's a lot of um, memories of what it was like living in Detroit at a time of great terror. It really was truly uh, a, a terrible time. And not just in Detroit. I mean, in the same way that 9-11 unleashed such um, uh, hatred toward uh, Muslim, Arab, South Asian people, that was the kind of hatred that was there for anybody who looked East Asian. But it's also um, a time of remembering just truly um, where we were then and how many organizations, I can't even count today. You know, back then in, in uh, 1982, there were two Pan-Asian advocacy organizations in the entire country, legal advocacy groups, one in New York, all deaf, and one here in San Francisco, um, Asian Law Caucus, and just about every other organization, the very few that existed were ethnically, you know, based. So really, those were the only two um, Pan-Asian organizations. They weren't national. And so being in Detroit was like, where do you go from there? So, um, so it really is a time to appreciate all of that and to see how far we've come and to imagine that, you know, I want to do a special shout out, by the way, to, um, to Mike Kwan, the local organizer, Christine, um, and, and also to Curtis Chin for the amazing film, Vincent Hu, that brings the, what happens now to, you know, that seems like ancient history, truly, to, you know, uh, generations today, um, to make it current and relevant. And, I, and so I just thought I'd m say a couple of things of, of you know, reflections, um, which is, um, uh, I guess the first is, yes, we are getting older, and so what are those reflections? Um, I guess the one question I get asked most often is, if Vincent Chin case happened today, you know, would we be able to organize a national campaign? And, and I have to say, when you think about the dozens and dozens of organizations that are advoc advocacy groups that really know what the hate crimes laws are, you know, what criminal justice system, uh, criminal justice system is, I think definitely you know, we have some of those um, organizations and activists right up here and in the room. Um, I do think there would be a challenge, though. In, in, in 1982, you know, the Asian American population nationwide was, um, you know, under 2 million. It was maybe 0.01% of the country. In Detroit, it was a couple thousand people uh, by the census anyway. And so... There was no question. We all had to come together because apart we would have been zero. And so there was never a question like, is this, you know, should just the Chinese do it? Should, you know, what about he was viewed as Japanese? Should the JCL just take it up? There was no question about that. And there was also no question that we had to reach out um, to all the other communities that we could, all the other uh, communities of conscious, uh, conscience of, e of every type. And so today, you know, today we have, what, 17, 18 million Asian Americans. The, there are several Asian ethnic groups that are larger than the entire Asian American population back in um, 30 years ago. And I think today there is a special challenge in developing any kind of Pan-Asian um, movement. We have a Pan-Asian movement, but how do you keep it going? How, when something goes down, 
can the communities come together? Because the inclination, and we saw it, I, I think, in 9-11, we see it over and over again uh, with horrible hate crimes that happen today, that the, um, the inclination the, is to have the ethnic group, you know, whichever ethnic group is most effective, uh, affected to, um, you know, pull together. And, and not, and it's more difficult to reach out, partly because there are so many organizations, and it's like, well, they'll take care of it. We don't need to be involved, or we're not invited, so we don't need to be involved. So these are, um, this is a special, you know, I think, good challenge to have so many groups and so many uh, more people, but it does mean it takes a, a different kind of organizing because people aren't gonna say, of course, we have to reach out. And so that's one thought. Um, the other is that, uh, you know, back 30 years ago, we knew the names of the, the victims. I could, even 10 years after Vincent Chin case, when we started tracking uh, victims of anti-Asian violence, we knew who they were. We could, you know, on a national level, know what was going on. Now, sadly, there are so many tragic inc incidents that, you know, um, the name Vincent Chin, people's names should be as familiar with everybody as Vincent Chin's name is, but they're not. And so we know the name of, you know, Danny Chen or, or um, uh, Judy Chu's nephew, Harry, um, but not really people, I mean, it, it's only if we keep talking about them, uh, but the whole point of reaching out also means we have to remember names like, um, y um, you know, uh, like Trayvon Martin, and you know that most affects the African American community. But what I said about you know Asian Americans also is true. We have to reach out to other communities. We don't have to be invited. We have to stand up and speak up and say this hurts us, too. And um, and there are other names too uh, that we have to remember. We hear about a case of anti Asian violence, but um, you know. Tyler Clemente, uh, a, a, a queer um, European American kid who was uh, bullied uh, into, you know, contributing to his suicide by Asian American students of various Asian ethnicities. We can't forget that. And and actually, after 9/11, um, there was a, a terrible hate crime in Los Angeles where uh, a South Asian man who was not Muslim, but the attackers called him anti-Muslim names. Um, similar, you know, we see it over and over again. And the attackers uh, who beat him um, unconscious were Asi uh, East Asian Americans. And to my knowledge, they've never actually been caught and prosecuted. I don't know. But the point is, as we talk about anti-Asian violence, we have to remember, really, an anti-Asian violence movement is an anti-violence movement. And so that means we have to reach out everywhere. And so two more thoughts looking forward. Um, when Vincent Chin was killed in 1982, that was in the depths of a depression that began in the mid-70s. Mid-70s, like 1973, 1974, 1975. So it was seven, some seven plus years after that depression began that the actual severe violence began. And so we're what, four years out of, you know, um, 2008, the global financial crisis? There's no room for complacency ever. And so I would just say to remember that, especially as we know that China and India and the specter of all those axes of evil that all affect, you know, Asians um, are still, um, you know. Um, so the thing about needing each other, all, you know, the Pan-Asian movement, people of color, queer, um, you know, all movements of people of conscience is what we need to be vigilant and actively working all the time. And, and for you younger um, activists, which I guess is just about everybody in the room, I think, you know, <laughs> from my standpoint, um, you know, in 1982 and 1983, 1982 when Vincent Chin was killed, 1983 when the sentence was rendered and the movement began, um, the young activists in, at that point, the younger activists in that point, um, had no idea that 30 years later we'd be 
talking about this in a room like this and seeing so much progress and evolution and people coming together. And, uh, you know, we just stood up. We raised our voices. And so I know in this room, I mean, you're here. You're, whatever you're doing, wherever you're doing it, you know, raising your voices and standing up, I mean, whatever that is, there is nothing too great or too small. Um, you know, we had, back in the day when there was no fax machines and no uh, internet, we delivered, we had to hand deliver every press release we ever did. And we had retirees <laughs> who during the day, during the business day, would go and drive up to every news outlet and drop off press releases that we typed on typewriters, okay? <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, you could say, oh, what did I do? I, I delivered a press release. What did I do? I sent an email. What did I do? I made a phone call. What did I do? I told a friend, you know, a family member that they have to do something, send a letter, sign a petition. There's nothing too small. That's what this whole movement was about, and look where we are today. And so all of you in this room, what it, for all you're doing, I just want to thank you. And to just say, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, this is, we are, you know, it's going to be a whole different thing because of you. So th thank you, and, and thanks to all the organizers. <laughs>